Welcome to day 15. That's right, day 15 in our 21 together. So we're just going to wait for just a just a second or two to let some people jump on and um, and just get into this time together tonight. Um, we want to uh, welcome everyone who jumps on tonight. Welcome to everybody. Hey, Jill, Miss Shirley, good to see you. Our, on our online community pastor, Dallas, is with us, his wife, Celeste. Great to see you guys. Well, not see you, but see your names. And um, been such a great opportunity to spend time together every single night. Um, and I want to thank you for joining us. If you've if you've missed some, please go back and and watch. There is a narrative that's following us every single night. So, if you happen to have missed some, hello Lorraine, Miss Rosie, good to see your name as well. Um, if you happen to miss some time. Uh, we all have lives and we have things that we've, we've got to do and all of that. Hey, Carlos. Um, and we have all of those things to do. But, uh, um, but go back and watch. Uh, if you have missed any of these, please go back and watch. I know on the weekends, our traffic is down a little bit on Fridays and Saturdays specifically. Um, just because it's the weekend and Friday nights and Saturday nights. But if you happen to... Uh, if you happen to miss, please go back and watch because there is, like I said, a running narrative to the process that we've been going through. And tonight, day 15. So um, today we spent our day obeying the Lord. And for those that were at the healing place this morning, um, there was just a really, and if you weren't there, I just, I just want to tell you there was a just such a powerful, powerful um, few, a couple of moments. It wasn't just one moment, but there were several moments that were so so powerful this morning at the healing place. And um, there were just uh, <clears throat> some really cool things. Uh, just the, the time of worship together and song and music was was amazing. And the kids portion was so cool and it's, it's always so awesome to see our kids and remind us all of what really being like a child is all about. And Jesus did say that in Mark's gospel, that, um, that in order to enter the kingdom of God, we have to come as a little child, not being childish, but being childlike. <clears throat> and so that was awesome this morning. Um, to see our kids and, and singing and just how they interact with everything. It was really cool. They were very excited this morning. And, um, and then we, um, we had an opportunity to, uh, Tanya and I had an opportunity this morning just to kind of share our hearts just with something we were processing personally this morning. <clears throat> and many times as a, as a leader, um, you know, you don't, it, it's, it's not for everybody for you to share, you know, your personal things and, you know, your personal struggles sometimes in, in that public of a setting. But this morning, it really felt like the Holy Spirit was leading us uh, just to share our hearts of, of something we were processing um, over the weekend. And we we shared that this morning with the, um, um, we, we shared that very uh, openly and honestly with our community of believers this morning at the Healing Place. Tanya and I, just in a very raw moment of just, you know, just putting it all out there w with how we were feeling and processing a situation. And the response to that was just absolutely unbelievable. The people that raised their hands to, uh, that were, that were questioning some things in their life. People that, I mean, we had, I can't tell you how many hands were raised when the question was asked, you know, how many of you here today have, you know, had the thought that everybody would just be better off if you weren't around or, and the hands went up everywhere or the question, you know, have you ever questioned that, you know, just, you don't matter. God's not with you at all. And God doesn't want to be with you. And Man, there were so many hands, and Tanya and I just, uh, uh, in, in a fashion that's probably not normal for, for churches, you know, we just, uh, the two of us 
we just walked around the sanctuary and just went as people had their heads bowed, nobody looking around at everybody, but the people that had their hands raised, we just walked around and just laid our hands on them and just let them know they weren't alone and that God was with them and that the Lord um, was using a very tragic situation to speak to them this morning. And um, it was very, very powerful um, of what happened this morning at the healing place. And then the word that God gave us was that, you know, he is with us and he's with us all the time. And we were given some instructions this morning from the word of God of, of, of how to live that out, of how to live out the reality that God is with us. And so we, we talked about that this morning and God moved in a really incredible way today. And we were so thankful for that. Um, so today was all about obeying. And so I, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was interesting. It was all about obeying and the Holy Spirit was telling me all morning, look, you need to, you need to t say this before you preach. And so I was just obedient to the Holy Spirit. And out of that, I believe that some people really got some healing in their life, some real deep uh, healing that the water of God's presence just washed over them. And um, we're so thankful for that opportunity. We never want to take those opportunities for granted. We want to, never want to take people that we love for granted. This morning, we had an opportunity to tell people around us that maybe we might see uh, all the time and just kind of not say it. But we really took time this morning before we left the property to tell as many people as we could to look them in the eye and tell them that we love them and that they matter. And, um, and, and that matters. And I, I just, I'm so thankful for that opportunity today that we had. So day 15, tonight we're going to talk about loving and we're going to pray about loving. Um, when, when we think about love, sometimes we think about it in terms that uh, are unrealistic at times. Sometimes we look at love as if it is a, uh, as if it is a movie, um, you know, that love is all clean and nice and, you know, true love isn't always clean and nice and, and, um, and, and perfect and structured and scheduled. You know, many times love is born out of, uh, hardship and love is born out of, um, uh, difficulty and harsh times. Love is birthed out of that. And, you know, just as it is with any relationship that you have, if you have any relationship that's worth anything, really worth anything, then that relationship has had to uh, stand the test of not only time, but the test of hardship. We're not going to agree with everybody all the time, and we're not going to understand everybody all the time. And if we want to, um, if we want to have a true relationship with the Lord and with other people, we are going to have to fight for it. You have to fight for it. I know that, you know, Tanya and I have been together some 27 years now, and we have had to fight for our relationship. We've had to, we've had to um, war spiritually for our relationship. We've had to um, fight apathy and lethargy We've had to we've had to fight those things. We've had to fight misunderstanding and disagreements and uh, arguments and all those things. We've had to fight through those things because that relationship is valuable. It's worth it. And really, prayer is all about love. Prayer is about love. Um, when you reduce prayer to kind of its essence, it's really you're left with love. You know, a prayer. Uh, a, an opportunity of 21 days together to say, Lord, we're, we're going to take these 21 days and we're going to dedicate these 21 days to prayer and fasting. Really what we're saying is, Lord, you know, according to Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, we're saying, Lord, we're going to return to our first love. Like we're going to put you first. Listen, guys, every single night at 830, I get it. Everybody can't be here at 830. And that's why we had the 21 together guides. And there are more of us together than have just been on Facebook Live. Um, but even for me, um, you know, um, I, I, it's, I can't take the night off every night for 21 days. I'm going to do everything that I can to be with you and to share these moments with you. And it's not always convenient and it's not always, you know, the right timing or whatever, but, but we are really trying to get a reset literally into a lifestyle of prayer and fasting, not just 21 days. We've talked almost every day about, it's not just about 21 days, but it's about setting building blocks and a pattern 
for not just 21 days, but our lives following this 21 days. And we're returning to our first love. Not that we didn't love Jesus, but, but consecrating these times is really a return to our first love. Psalm 45 is a, is a, a, a psalm that really speaks to this. It says, listen, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your own people also in your father's house. So the king will greatly desire your beauty because he is your Lord. Worship him. Clearly, the love that flows between the king and his bride is romantic. Now look, guys, dudes that are on this, <laughs> I understand that when you start talking about romantic and all this stuff as it has to do with the Lord, man, that can be uncomfortable. And I, man, I get it. I'm a man and I'm a man's man and I like to get dirty and fix stuff and break stuff and shoot and all this other stuff. I, I love to do all that stuff. And, you know, those things that would be considered to be a man, I, I try to, you know, I, I believe I am that. And so I've had to walk through this as well, that when you start talking about love for Jesus being like in this romantic way, it can be very uncomfortable because really when you talk about romantic love outside of all other kinds of love, the main element is desire. One of the first things we talked about in this 21 together is desiring the Lord. And in romance, there is a desire, a strong desire to be together, to, to be together. We can't seem to get enough of one another in that true sense. And that's the way it needs to be with us and the Lord. We've got to express our desire for him. We have to, we have to tell him how much we want to be with him and how much we want to see him and, and know him and, 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 and let his love flow through us. You know, the secret place, and I'm going to use some terms that might be a little uncomfortable for us tonight, but the secret place is almost like a womb. It's like we go to the secret place with God and it's almost like this place of, of um, it's this place where love is nurtured and it's grown. It, it's like we go into this place with the Lord and we're being fed from an outside source, which becomes an inner source, which is from heaven. And God is our source. And we get into this, this womb of the secret place in relationship with God. And we're being fed by his presence. And we're being fed by his joy. And we're being fed by his love. And it's like we're growing. And love begins to grow in us. And, and just as fire is never satisfied, according to Proverbs 30, the, the, the passion of divine love is always looking for a greater abandonment. Like our love for Jesus is always pushing us to 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 know Him more. A, a, a passion for Jesus is 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 literally pushing us to love Him more and to experience Him more and to encounter Him more and to be more like Him. John chapter fifteen says, "As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love." Now our ladies at THP have been going through this process of teaching on abiding. And he says, abide in my love. And then he says this, I think it's in verse 12. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. So the love that flows between father and son is the model that, that flows between us and Christ and then us and others. So we thought it was enough to love our neighbor as ourselves, but Jesus says to love one another as I have loved you. Like he is raising the bar. He is saying that, that we have to love one another almost as, it, as the father loved the son. I mean, that's a, that's a heavy duty principle because that means that, that forgiveness has to flow freely in that relationship. For, for, and that love has to be given in a manner that doesn't excuse sinful behavior but but it leaves room that that we're not the judge of it all that God is the judge of it all and that we are to love one another and and we need to realize that John 15 tells us to abide in my love and then in Romans and this is this is the last scripture I want to give you tonight in Romans it it describes this unbelievable love that God has given us and it says for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth. Any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And I tell you the truth in Christ, I am not lying. For I could wish, he goes on to say in Romans chapter 9, for I could wish that I myself were accursed from Christ for my brethren, my countrymen, according to my flesh. 
he is expressing his love not only for Christ, but for his fellow brethren, his brothers and sisters in Christ. And he ends Romans 8 by describing this, this love that's almost like the, the, uh, the kind of the Mount Everest of love because it's the love of God from which absolutely nothing on this earth can separate us. Like that's how he ends Romans 8, describing this unbelievable love that cannot separate us from anything. Hey, Michael, I love you, my friend. We're talking day 15, loving. As a matter of fact, I want to tell you how much I love this guy that just got on here, Michael Lagaris in Ohio. I love that man, he is such a man of God. I love him with a, with a brotherly, everlasting love. Listen, in the verses that follow, Paul describes this love, not only that he had for Christ, but his fellow brothers. And listen, that is heavy stuff, folks. It is heavy. And loving one another as Christ loved us is, is heavy, heavy stuff. Because it means that it's going to be work and we're going to have to fight for it. And we have to fight for love, like true love, you have to fight for it. The Romans 8 love of God that God has given to us. And then the Romans 9 love that Paul talks about for his brothers and his sisters. So Romans 8, he's talking about this love that God has for us. And then in Romans 9, he's talking about this love that he has for, for his brothers and sisters. So we're going to end this night with prayer, and we're going to pray, uh, Lord, fill me with your love. Tanya, are you in there, sweetheart? Yeah. Can you come here, please? I would like the love of my life beside Jesus to come and just join us. The Lord's really been speaking to her prophetically, and I just want her to be involved in this and, and just pray. And, and, uh, and we're going to fight together tonight in our prayer. We're going to fight together. We're going to fight together in prayer and so we're gonna we're gonna pray together you're gonna get to see our big faces up close and personal and um, as we pray um, we're gonna pray that the Lord would fill us with his love and that he would give us that Romans 8 love we could receive that and learn how to receive that and it would so fill us that we would understand and then function in that Romans 9 love for one another so if the Lord is speaking something to you guys please just post it um, if you have prayer needs after this, please media hub at thpshreveport.com and uh, place that prayer need. Or if you have a, if you have a uh, testimony from our time of prayer and fasting, please send that to our online community pastor, Dallas Mora, at media hub at thpshreveport.com. So let's go ahead and pray. Lord, just fill us with your love, Jesus. Fill us with your love, Jesus. Give us the Give us the heights. Give us the, the mountaintop of Romans 8 love that teach us how to receive that, Jesus. Teach us how to receive that love. And Lord, may that Romans 8 love fill us so much that, God, we would be able to understand the revelation of that Romans 9 love for one another, that we love one another. Give us that love, Lord God. Give us that love, Lord God, that we can function in that love, that we can be receivers of that love and givers of that love. Lord, we, we desire today, Lord, to be in the womb of the secret place, just like we talked about earlier, Lord, that when we go into the secret place with you, it's like going into the womb and, and you're feeding us from heaven. Your, your word feeds us from heaven and it's like a nourishment that we can't get from this earth. God, there is a feeding stream that comes to us in the womb of the, of the, of the secret place that, God, we can't get from this world. We can't get it from anywhere else, Lord God, but Lord, in the womb of the secret place, the womb of the secret place, Lord, there is a there is a feeding that comes upon us, Lord God. And there is a heavenly language that comes upon us. There's a there's a heavenly rhythm that comes into our lives that God our our spirit and our bodies and our our souls, Lord God, can come into that rhythm, Lord God, that we're being fed from heaven. God, it's a rhythm that's not of this earth, but it's a rhythm, Lord God, of heaven. And God, as we get into that rhythm and we bring our DNA into alignment with the rhythm of heaven. God, it changes our prayer life, Lord. We begin to pray things we've never prayed before. We begin to declare words we've never declared before. We begin to get understanding in your word that we've never gotten before. 
because Lord, we're in the secret place. We're in the womb of the secret place, Lord, being fed by another stream, a stream that goes beyond our comprehension, a stream, Lord God, and a feeding that comes from a place that, that God, we, as much as we can think about it and dream about heaven, God, there is, it goes way beyond any of that, God. And so, Lord, when we go into your secret place and we get into that womb of the secret place, Lord, you feed us. You feed us with a stream and a nourishment that we cannot even comprehend. And God, in that, then we begin to speak things that we've not learned in a book. We begin to declare things, Lord God, that we don't have a, a degree on the wall, that we got a degree in this specific thing because we don't come with persuasive words of man's wisdom, but power and demonstration of the Holy Ghost because we have been in the womb, Lord God, of the secret place. And so, Lord, teach us to love, Lord God. Teach us to love on another level, Jesus. Teach us to love you as we've never loved you before. Teach us to love ourselves as we've never loved before. And teach us to love our neighbors and our brothers and our sisters like we have never we have never loved before, Jesus. Lord, give us a love that goes beyond, that goes beyond time. That God, just that we can meet someone, Lord God, and have a love for them in their humanity because they are a child of God. And Lord, never let us waste a day, a moment. Never let us waste a day or a moment. Never let us waste a moment of making sure that we look people in the eye and say, I love you. Never let us miss a moment, Jesus, to look one another in the eye and say, hey, I love you. Lord Jesus, I thank you that we're not perfect. And we're, so, we're so fallen at times. But we thank you that, that in our fallenness, there is a brokenness. And in our brokenness, in our humility, Lord, there is a grace and a mercy that comes. You are drawn to our brokenness. A broken and contrite heart he'll not despise. Like he is drawn to your brokenness. You may say tonight, you know what, Scott? Man, I am just broken. Listen to me. Today, I mean today, just as today, I can promise you, I know what that feels like. You say, well, I'm, man, I'm just broken. You know what? <laughs> as broken as you are, Jesus is drawn to that brokenness. You may say, I'm broken. How can anybody love me? Well, in your brokenness, Jesus is so attracted to you. He is so attracted to you. I think we can never be more attractive to the Lord Jesus than when we're broken before him. That when we're not depending on our human knowledge to get by, and we're not depending on our means that we have here on earth to get by, but we're totally and absolutely dependent upon him. And in our brokenness, he, he runs to us. You know, the story of the prodigal is amazing in so many ways. But the thing that always gets me is the prodigal is in the pig pen and he's serving as a slave to a master. And all of a sudden, the word of God says that he came to himself. Like he came to himself. What happened? He realized that he wasn't a slave. He was a son. That he had a dad. He had a father. And so he said, you know what? I would rather, I would rather be a servant in my father's house than in this pig pen to this man that I don't even know. I'd rather be a servant in my father's house, my father, and I am his son than to be here and be a slave to a master. And he gets up and he's broken. I mean, he's completely broken. He has nothing to fall back on. And he goes back home. And instead of being met with just rage and anger and all of those things, the father runs to him. And, you know, you need to study the, the, the roots of all the wording and everything that's going on in that story because there's a whole lot more going on in that story than, than, than just a, a, a kid running home. If you, if you left the house, took your inheritance and spent it all, not only would you not be welcomed into your home, you wouldn't be welcomed into your community and judgment would be brought on against you. And you could actually be stoned 
if the people of the community got to you first. In those days, a man of the father's stature wasn't supposed to run either. It wasn't dignified to run. And so what did the father do? He ran to him. Why? I believe he was running to him so he would get to him before the people of the town so that he could cover him in grace before judgment came on him. That although he deserved what would have came to him, the father um, the father didn't bring that. The father just wrapped his coat around him and said, hey, prepare a goat. It's time to have a party. My son has come home. And that's the way the Lord looks at us. That's the way the Lord looks at us. And so love, love really is about brokenness. This lady right here, you know, we have, we have been through some things that made it hard to breathe. But, and it, and, and we walked through it through brokenness. And it forged our love together. It forged the fire of our love and our desire for one another. And so we really do love you. And when your name comes up, you are being prayed for. And we are praying that the God of the universe who loves you so much would, would shower down his love on you and that you would know that. And if nothing else, look, we, we don't do these things for them to be commercialized and professionally produced and you know every word to be correct and all this stuff. We do this because we believe that uh, people need this. I need this. You need this. You need people that will pray with you and believe God for you and with you. And people that will pray and not only pray with you, but fast with you and come into agreement. And that's what we've been doing. And so um, day 15, isn't that crazy? Day 15. And so we've got some pretty awesome nights ahead of us. I know there's a lot going on in our city a lot of things are happening in our city and, and you know, churches are having productions and all that stuff is going on. And we've got, you know, we've got some folks coming into town and we've got community worship services and Friday night independent stadium, you know, uh, here in Shreveport um, with a community worship service. And we've got some great things. Um, we've got some great things happening, but I'm going to be here or at least on this iPad or my phone at 8.30 every single night, no matter where I'm at, and uh, we're going to be praying together. And then whenever you log on, you're going to get the, you're going to get the amount of time that, that we've been given every single night because we've committed to this journey together, 21 together. And we believe it's going to set the stage for awesome days to come. So we love you. Hey, don't forget to send your prayer requests and uh, your testimonies. Uh, to Media Hub at thpshreveport.com, our online community pastor, Dallas Mora. And Dallas has been doing such an awesome job uh, during these 21 days. He's been here every night with me, and, uh, and he's been keeping you guys uh, attuned and posting up while we're talking and reminding you of the scriptures and all those things and responding to you as well. And so uh, thank Dallas as you guys are shooting out emails and stuff like that. Media Hub at thpshreveport.com. Just send a a cute little email to him and just tell him how much you appreciate him uh, giving of his time and functioning in day 15, loving all of you. So, sweetheart, do you have anything to say? Hey, just love people genuinely. People know when it's real. People know when it's fake. Just be real. Love them. Love them real. You want the same thing. You want people to love you real. Love them real. Yeah. All right. We love you guys. And... Uh, Day 15 tomorrow, go after it. Love somebody Hello, like they love somebody like they've never been loved before tomorrow. Okay? Love somebody like they've never been loved before. God bless you. We love you. Love Have good rest tonight.